All right, we are moving on to creating graphical representations. If you are taking this with seventh grade math, this is your lesson 6.02. If you are taking this with accelerated seventh grade math, this is lesson 6.06. .06. And as always, we're going to the vocabulary. A bar graph is a visual display of categorical data where each category is represented by a bar whose height represents the number in that category. We can do bar graphs vertically or horizontally. A box plot is a plot displaying the spread or distribution of data using a five number summary. So we find the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum. This has also been known as a box and whisker plot. So box plot, box and whisker plot. Categorical data is data divided into groups. It is qualitative. It's not necessarily, it's not numbers. We've done circle graphs before where we have the visual display of categorical data represented by a circle and its interior. The categories are represented by fractional parts of the circle, also known as a pie chart. The histogram is a visual display of numerical data using bars along a number line with no spaces between the bars. So it looks like a bar graph, but the bars are touching. The height of each bar represents either the frequency or relative frequency of data within the interval. And a line plot, a visual display of data values where each value is known as a dot or mark above a number line, also known as a dot plot. Stem and leaf plot is a table that organizes data by place value to compare the data frequencies. Numerical data is measurable and quantitative. And univariate data is data that is given for only one variable or characteristic. That's a lot of vocab, but pause your video and make sure you write it all down. Today, our objective is to learn to choose an appropriate graph for numerical and categorical data and to create the appropriate graph for numerical and categorical data. So we have classifying data. Every data set includes information about individuals such as people, places, objects, and animals. The individuals in the data set are measured based on variables, which are characteristics that are evaluated or collected. For example, if a zookeeper tracks the number of pounds of meat each tiger eats on a daily basis, the individual is one tiger and the variable is the number of pounds of meat eaten in one day. Data can either involve categorical variables or numerical values, variables. Numerical data represents variables that measure a specific number. So for the zookeeper, the number of pounds of meat eaten is a numerical value. On the other hand, categorical data represents variables that place an individual into a category or group. For example, zookeeper, um, animal type or food type or animal gender could be categorical data. <clears throat> so categorical data, uh, the method of displaying the data depends on the type of variables and the number of variables. Data that is given for only one variable is known as univariate data. So the most common graphs for displaying categorical univariate data are bar graphs, circle graphs, and line plots. So a circle graph, we learned about that already, those pie charts. And let's refresh how to create a circle graph. Add up all the values to get the total sum. <clears throat> Find the central angle for each slice by doing the amount in the category over the total sum of the data times 360 over one. Make sure you use the protractor, draw your circle, find the, um, find the uh, angle measure, the, the degree. Step three, find the percentage for each slice by doing the amount in the category over the total sum times 100 over one. And make sure you title your graph and label everything with the category and percentage. So here are the steps in action. We add up two plus three plus four plus two plus one. We add up all those numbers and we find that there are 12 candies. Step two, we create our fractions. There are two red candies out of 12. So two over 12 times 360 gives us 60 degrees 
for red. Orange is 3 over 12 times 360, which gives, which gives us 90 degrees. Yellow is 4 out of 12 times 360, which gives us 120 degrees. Green is 2 out of 12 times 360, it equals 60 degrees. And blue is 1 out of 12 times 360 equals 30 degrees. So step three, find the percentages. So the same fractions that we used for the degree, we're going to use that same fraction, but now we're multiplying it by 100 to get the percent. And step four, label, title, put everything on the graph to be done. Another method is a bar graph. So the steps for creating a bar graph is to title and label the axes, choose the appropriate scale for the vertical axis, and draw the vertical bars for each category. So using the same candy example, we have our axis, our title, our labels, we've got everything right there. We need to pick a scale for number of candies. And I'm gonna say one, two, three, four is probably fine because the candies are small. There's not a lot of them. And step three, draw the bars for each color. So red had two, so the bar should go up to the number two. Orange had three, so the bar should go up to the number three. Yellow had four and so on. And a line plot. Steps for creating a line plot is to title the graph and label the horizontal axis, place a dot above the category to represent each individual data set. So we have our line, we have our colors, and we have our label color and our title distribution of sour candies. Here's where it's a little different. We're going to do a dot for each number. So there are two red, so there should be two dots. There are three orange, so there should be three dots. There are four yellow, so there should be four dots. Three dots for green and one dot for blue. So three different ways to do categorical data. And we can see them side by side. They look completely different. Although the bar graph and the um, dot plot look similar, um, the circle graph obviously looks way different. Now take a second to solve these four problems, pause your video, work out the problems, and check your answers. Now we have numerical data. Numerical data can be represented um, with a histogram, a line plot, a box plot, and a stem and leaf plot. So a histogram, title the graph. That seems to be step one for all of them. Draw and label the axes. Choose an appropriate scale. Those step ones and twos are pretty much the same for almost all of them. Step three, draw the vertical bars for each interval. There are no spaces between the bars on a histogram. So we need different, a different example for this numerical data because it's different than the categorical data. So Mrs. Alfonso's seventh grade class is doing an activity about data collection. The students are collecting data to answer the question, what is the most common amount of sneakers owned by students in the class? The following data set shows the number of sneakers owned by each student. So one student has four, another student has six, 10, 12. Using the data, create the histogram. So step one, we've labeled our graph and labeled our axes. Step two, we need to create the scale for number of sneakers and frequency. And then, okay, so we have our data from least to greatest. That's gonna help us stay organized. The number in the data goes from four to 51. So the number of sneakers, it would probably be best to count by fives. The frequency of each interval ranges from zero students to six students. So we can see, um, the frequency would just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then step three, we're going to <clears throat> do our connected histogram. Notice there's not a box between 40 and 50, and that's because it is zero. There are zero times that the number 41, 
you know, to 50, 49 occurs. So any number between zero and 10 is gonna be counted for the first bar. So we have one, two, three. Oh, it needs to be in numerical order. So if we go back here, one, it really helps put it in numerical order. Whoops, give me one second. We are not gonna include 10. So we have six numbers in that zero to nine range. <clears throat> so we would have a box that goes up to a bar that goes up to six. For 10 to 19, we would go back and do one, two, three, four. Okay, for 20 to 29, one, two, for 30 to 39, we have another two. We don't have any numbers in the 40s, and then we have one in the 50s. So they are touching because there is no gap between their intervals. It's zero through 10, zero through nine, 10 through 19. We're going straight from one to the next. Okay, line plots. Line plots can be used to display categorical data and numerical data. When a line plot is used to display numerical data, the amount of dots over a particular value represents the number of time that value occurs. So same steps, title the graph, label and scale the horizontal axis and place a dot above the data value. So we have the same numbers we had before, Again, it really helps to have it in numerical order, but we don't have to in this case. We have our title, we have our label, and we have, we're counting by twos in this situation. <clears throat> so now we have one four, we're gonna put an X over four. We have two five, so we're gonna put two dots over five. We have one six, we have one seven, we have one eight, we have two tens, we have an 11, we have a 12, then all of a sudden we jump up to 22, 23, 37, and 51. 35, I missed 35. I knew I was missing something. <clears throat> all right, more numerical data, a stem and leaf plot. So we're gonna determine the stems and the titles and order the data from least to greatest. This is really about place value. So we have our tens and we have our ones places. We're gonna list the leaves next to their corresponding stems. The leaves are the final digit in the numbers. <clears throat> it's typically the ones place. Leaves should go to the right of the vertical bar. And then you can create a key that explains how to read the data. So using the same data from Mrs. Alfonso's class, step one, create the stem and leaf plot. So it's kind of like a T. We've got our label sneakers in Mrs. Alfonso's class. And then we have the tens place, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Step two, any single digit number like four is zero, whoops, is zero four. So zero is the tens place, four is the ones. Five is gonna be five and five because zero is the tens place, five is the ones place. Six, six, seven, eight. So the ones are kind of easy because they're just right there. Now we have 10, 12, 11, and 10. So the one is our tens place. And we have two tens, we have an 11 and we have a 12. And then we're gonna repeat that for the 20s. There's a 22 and a 23. There's a 35 and a 37. There are no 40s and there's a 51. Now the last step is to create that scale. So the key would say two line two means 22. 
So this part right here, that means that it's 22. And box plots. Again, title and label, find the five number summary. This one's a lot of work. <laughs> and then we're gonna draw the dot plot, dot plot, box plot. So the same data we have before, we're gonna title and label the box plot. Step two, we need to calculate the smallest number, the biggest number, the median, the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So lowest and highest, not so bad. We have four, we have 51. Those are pretty easy. Then we have the median, which is the middle of the data. So we can find the middle. And there's a couple different ways that you could do it. So 10 is our middle. Now to find the lower quartile, it is the middle value in the lower half of the data. So we already said that 10 was our middle. So what's the middle of the middle? Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the middle Oh, I don't think we use that eight. Hold on one second. We're not gonna use that. The median should not be used, whoops. So we're gonna use 6 is the lower quartile, so it's the lower median. And then 23 is our upper quartile or the upper median. And then step three, we're going to draw a line at the lowest, the highest, the median, the upper quartile, and the lower quartile. And then we create a box around the upper quartile and lower quartile. <clears throat> so this would be really good to have in your notes. It has the advantages and the disadvantages of circle graphs, bar graphs, line plots, histograms, stem and leaf, and box plot. <clears throat> At least kind of think about their advantages and why we use them and when we use them. That will help you decide when, you know, when you have a question, which one should you use, that will help you. So pause and go to page six and work on the five slides, checking your answers. And before you are done, make sure you have all the vocabulary words and the key points in your notes. I know it's a lot to write down, but it's better than memorizing it all. Um, good luck, have a great day, and remember to come to the Zoom if you have any questions.